Hello, welcome to the fourth episode of the computer craft tutorials. Um, last episode we talked about variables and how you could store data in them like numbers and strings and how you could edit those numbers and strings um, and subtract them from each other, that kind of stuff. Uh, that was the first building block in our computer language and the second building block will be explained now. I'm going to split this uh, episode into two parts probably because it's too much to um, bunch up into one short video. I, I tried a couple of times and I failed miserably. So I'm going to split it up and hopefully that will make things more clear. Now what I'm gonna, going to introduce is the if statement and uh, I'll show you how this works right now. So in the last tutorial we could put values into variables like x is equal to 6 but let's say that at some point in your program you want to print x is bigger than 5. Now the question is how do you know this? Because um, you don't know what x is going to be before you print this. Anything could happen in between the first time you assign it and when you want to print it. So somehow we need to check this before we print it, otherwise we might be printing wrong information. Um, to do this, you use what's called the if statement which is started by typing if and then you have to type whatever you want it to check. In this case check if x is bigger than 5 and only then will you do whatever we put in between the if and the end. Um, so whenever you use an if you also have to end it at some point so that Lua knows everything that happens in between here uh, between the if and the end has to be done only if x is greater than 5. Now what the if um, uses to check is what's called a boolean value and these a boolean value is something that can be either true or false, it can only have two values. Now you can also store these in variables so I'm going to create a variable bool and I'm going to give it equal to true and I'm going to make a bool2 and make it equal to false. Now these are the only two values a boolean can have, true or false, and that's what um, this is as well, this x and then the little arrow thing, 5, um, that in its uh, whole is a boolean value, in this case it's true because x is equal to 6. Now you have more of these, um, which I will show now, I believe I typed them beforehand to save some time although I'm wasting it now by uh, failing miserably with the typing. So let me uh, grab these, hopefully it's down here somewhere. I pushed enter too many times it seems. There we go. Right, so here they are. Um, here's what we used. x is greater than y. This is true when x is bigger than y only. So if x is equal to y or smaller than y, it's false. Um, x is smaller than y, it uses the arrow that's pointing the other way. Um, this is true when x is smaller than y, and if x is equal to y or greater than y, it's false. You have also x is exactly equal to y, use the double equal sign for that. Um, it's true if x and y are equal to each other, and otherwise it's false, of course. And you have the inverse of that, which is x is not equal to y, which is true if x is not equal to y. And if they are exactly the same value, then it will be false. So, that's your basic uh, logical operators, as it were, to check whether two values are different or the same, or bigger than the other. And you can use this to check things in if statements. So you can do if, and then check two things, whether they're equal or smaller than each other, whatever you like, as long as it turns into a boolean value and then it will run the code in the if statement and only then. If it's false then it will not run it and it will just skip to the next part of code. Now it may happen that you want to check multiple things at once. Now of course we could do this by making an if statement in an if statement. So let's say we want to check if x is greater than 5, but we also want to check if x is um, smaller than 20. 
So you know we can just write another if statement, no problem. And and now we can print x is bigger than five and smaller. Then twenty. So that's possible. Now, if you need to check a bunch of things like this, um, you might notice that <laughs> your code is going to get very long, and it might get a little bit annoying to read. So what you can do, instead of making hundreds of if statements, you can check things in as multiple things in a single if statement by using and. Now you can say and x is smaller than 20. Now what this does is it checks the first part so it checks is x greater than 5 it says yep that's true okay now I'm going to check if x is smaller than 20 as well and if that's true if both of these are true only then will I continue with the code in the if statement if either one is false it will skip the if statement completely so even if one of them is true and the other is not it will skip it because of the and it has to both be true that's why it's and so in this case, we can remove this second if statement. We don't need it anymore. We're already checking that in the first if statement. Do do do. There we go. Now, as you may expect, there's also different kinds of these operators. Um, this is the AND, which um, means that the part on the left-hand side and the part on the right-hand side both have to be true at the same time, but we have more. For example, the OR, and here's the AND explained again. So bool and bool2, that's only true if both boolean values are true at the same time. So not one of them can be false. So you also have the OR, so you have bool or bool2, and this is true if either one of the booleans is true. So one of them can be false, as long as one of them is true, the entire statement will be true. So, let's say I put OR here. Um, now, basically this means that this statement is always going to be true, because x is either greater than 5, but what if x is smaller than 5? Well, then x is definitely going to be smaller than 20, so that's going to be true. Um, so either, either, even if one of these two is false, the other is going to be true, um, which means this is always going to be true. Um, and if x is in between 5 and 20, then it's both of them are going to be true, and which still means it's going to be true. So the OR statement is true if both are true, or either one is true. The AND statement only if both are true. And there we go. So there's your basic uh, logical operators um, and how they work with uh, numbers. Now you can also use the equal to and not equal to with uh, letters um, to check if, if you want to if you want to check that two words are the same. Um, this is possible um, and can be useful. Not very often though. You can, in principle, also use the greater than and smaller than signs on words and letters. Um, I would not advise doing this though, as it's usually not useful and very confusing most of the time. Um, so really only use that with numbers, it makes a lot more sense. It doesn't make as much sense with letters to me. Um, yeah, so that's basically it. So yeah, the if statement, if whatever's in the if statement is true, it will execute the code until the end. If it's not true, if it's false, then it will skip all the code until the end and continue after that. Okay, um, we'll be continuing with part 2 now, uh, which will be um, expanding on the functionality of the if statement a little bit, because there is much more to it than just this. So, see you in part 2.